From WNEP, the news station, this is 2022, a look back. Hello, welcome to a special edition of Newswatch 16, where we take a look back at the year gone by. I'm Lisa Washington. And I'm Scott Schaefer. 2022 brought us many memorable moments and saw the return of several traditions around here that had been put on hold because of the pandemic. Here is a look back at some of our area's biggest news stories of the year. The new year marked a new start for Scranton. In January, the electric city finally shed its status as a distressed city. The state decided that after 30 years, Scranton's finances no longer needed oversight under a law known as Act 47. Scranton is one of only 16 Pennsylvania municipalities to successfully emerge from distressed city status. Also in January, a wreck in Montour County brought national attention to our area. The crash near Danville involved a trailer carrying monkeys that were being transported to a science lab. Three monkeys were on the loose for a bit before being captured and euthanized. Officials said the monkeys posed a health risk. In February, the world watched as Russian forces invaded Ukraine. Several agencies and people from our area gave their support to Ukraine. Professor Matthew Kaninitz, a Frankville native and English professor at the Ukrainian Catholic University in Lviv, held virtual classes with his students who were in Ukraine before he returned to the war-torn country. I've been gone for too long, and it, it's just that need to be able to see people and to be able to be to be part of, of where I was for the past three years. Also in February, state police announced that they had solved a nearly 60-year-old cold case in Luzerne County. Investigators identified James Fort as the man who raped and murdered Maurice Chivarella in 1964. The nine-year-old was kidnapped in Hazleton as she walked to school. Eric Schubert, a college student who's also an expert in genealogy, helped state police finally close this cold case. <laughs> 2022 was also a year when we saw new hospitals open in our area. In May, Lehigh Valley Health Network opened a new hospital in Dixon City. A few weeks later, in early June, LVHN opened a new campus in Carbon County near Lehighton. And there were also some closures. In May, Commonwealth Health announced it would close the emergency room at the hospital, known to many as Tyler Memorial near Tonkanic. The ER there was officially closed on July 1st. And citing an incident in June, Commonwealth Health made the decision to close First Hospital in Kingston. Outpatient behavioral health services were also eliminated in the fall. In July, the owner of Berwick Hospital Center in Columbia County announced it would close. The owner is converting it into a psychiatric facility. Summer also saw a major highway project in central Pennsylvania take a big step forward. In late June, thousands of people either rode bikes or took a stroll on a new section of the Susquehanna Valley Thruway in Northumberland County. The road opened to traffic a few days later. Later in the summer, tragedy hit a community in Luzerne County. In August, 10 members of the same family died in a fire at a home in Nescapec. Adding to that grief, just one week later, at a benefit for relatives of those fire victims, a crash left two people dead and more than a dozen injured. Adrian Sura Reyes is accused of driving through the crowd that had gathered outside the intoxicology department in Berwick. Police say Sura Reyes then drove back to his home in Nescapec and killed his mother. In September, a jury in Monroe County found Randy Halterman not guilty of criminal homicide and other charges. The year before, Halterman shot and killed Adam Schultz and shot Schultz's girlfriend when the two trespassed and entered Halterman's home near Stroudsburg. At his trial, Halterman said the state's castle doctrine gave him the right to use deadly force. In October, a guilty plea to first-degree murder in Lycoming County, Marie Snyder admitted starving her two young daughters to death. Four-year-old Jasmine and six-year-old Nicole were buried in the backyard of the home near Williamsport that Snyder shared with her partner, Echo Butler. Butler is awaiting trial in Lycoming County, and Snyder is expected to testify against her. In early December, fire at a home in Schuylkill County led to the deaths of two firefighters. Neutropoli Assistant Fire Chief Zachary Paris and firefighter Marvin Gruber were killed while battling the fire in the West Penn Township near Tamaqua. Not long after that fire started, the body of a man who lived in the home, Christopher Kammerdiner, was found in a wooded area behind the house. 
There were plenty of good things that happened in our area in 2022. WNEP's Go Joe celebrated its 25th year. Newswatch 16 morning meteorologist Joe Snedeker biked all around northeastern and central Pennsylvania. And after a couple of years off due to the pandemic, the St. Joseph's Festival returned to the grounds of Marywood University in Lackawanna County. Thanks to your generosity, the ride and the festival helped raise a record amount of more than $1 million for St. Joseph's Center in Scranton. In October, runners pounded the pavement for 26.2 miles from Forest City to downtown Scranton. The Steamtown Marathon returned for the first time since 2019. Runners from 35 states and five countries participated. Also back after a two-year break, the Santa Parade in Scranton. People lined the streets of the downtown sporting their Christmas best, watching the performers and floats, and of course, helping the big man in red ring in the holiday season. Some of the other big news stories in our area involved politics. Aren't you glad all those ads are gone? At least for now. Let's take a look at some of the faces that shaped Pennsylvania politics in 2022. The first political casualty of 2022 came before the first votes were even cast. Republican Congressman Fred Keller from central Pennsylvania lost his seat to redistricting. Keller briefly considered a primary challenge to fellow Republican Congressman Dan Muser, but ultimately decided to step away from Washington, at least for now. That left the primary season for two closely watched statewide races. For an open governor's seat, State Attorney General Josh Shapiro found himself unopposed on the Democratic ticket, but the Republicans featured a crowded field that included former Hazelton mayor, former Congressman Lou Barletta. In the end, far-right state Senator Doug Mastriano from Franklin County ended up with a relatively easy victory in the May primary. A late endorsement from former President Trump and a controversial decision by Shapiro to run ads aimed at Republican voters helped put Mastriano over the top. Pennsylvania also had an open U.S. Senate seat in 2022 following the retirement of two-term Republican Pat Toomey. For the Republicans, the race narrowed to a battle between celebrity Dr. Mehmet Oz and investment banker Dave McCormick. The two waged a relentless and expensive TV ad campaign. Oz got the Trump endorsement and eked out a narrow victory in May. For the Democrats, Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman had a surprisingly easy time defeating Congressman Connor Lamb. But days before the primary, Fetterman suffered a stroke. It would become one of the biggest issues in the fall campaign against Dr. Oz. Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania saw a wave of state legislators choose retirement over re-election in 2022. Long-time incumbents from both parties, among them Mike Carroll. David Millard, Jerry Knowles, Jerry Mullery. Newswatch 16 morning anchor Tom Williams gave up his microphone for a shot at one of the open seats. He did not survive the Republican primary. The fall campaign for Congress featured two rematches from 2020. The 7th District, represented by Democrat Susan Wilde of Allentown, was expanded back into parts of the Poconos after reapportionment. Even with the new lines, Wilde again beat back a challenge from Republican Lisa Scheller. In northeastern Pennsylvania's 8th District, Republican Jim Bognett won the GOP primary for the second time. And for the second time, he lost a bitter, costly race to incumbent Democrat Matt Cartwright. In the governor's race, Shapiro was barely challenged in the general election. Most polls showed Mastriano trailing by double digits throughout. His unconventional campaign mostly avoided local media outlets and had very little money for advertising. Shapiro won easily. His running mate, State Representative Austin Davis, will be Pennsylvania's first lieutenant governor of color. Conversely, the Senate race came down to the wire. Oz made a blunder early on with a homemade video where he confused the name of Wegman's supermarket. Fetterman kept an extremely low profile while he recovered from the stroke. When he did finally debate, his uneven performance led to a tightening of the polls as voters considered whether he was healthy enough to serve. In the end, Fetterman won a relatively comfortable race in November. Come January, Pennsylvania will have two elected Democrats in the Senate for the first time in many years. But even after the November election, there was still one more political surprise for 2022. Longtime state Senator John Gordner announced his retirement from the legislature. The special election to replace him will be one of the first political stories of 2023. I'm Scott Schaefer, Newswatch 16.
A lot of the stories we covered in 2022 were all about the Benjamin. That is for sure. From prices at the pump to prices at the grocery store, 2022 sure did take a big bite out of your wallet. See just how big when Newswatch 16's look back at 2022 comes right back. Welcome back to our look back at the year that was 2022. And if you thought it seemed like you paid more for just about everything, you thought right. Newswatch 16's John Meyer shows us that from the gas for our cars to the food for our tables, everything just kept going up and up. Inflation, inflation, inflation. We heard about it all year long. Prices going up and up, especially at the supermarket. Everything is getting higher all the time. Yeah, it's not easy, especially for people with small kids and big families. Just look at the graph tracking inflation rates in the U.S. Much of the year, we were averaging a jump in prices of 9% over last year. That's the highest since the 1970s. Customers tell me almost every item they pull off the shelves is costing them more. There was another constant reminder of higher prices on signs just about everywhere we went, the price of gas, hitting a record high above five bucks a gallon in June. It's insane. It's nuts. Like, I just rode on an empty tank all the way here because I'm pushing it. It runs your pockets out quick. And me, I drive like 30 minutes every day to work, it, so it hits you hard. It's crazy. Something has to be done. Things did get a little better. This graph shows how prices soared above five bucks, nearly double a year and a half earlier, then another rise in the fall, but improvements since then. The winter heating season brought other challenges. Every heating source went up heading into the cold weather season, especially heating oil, a record high. Suppliers even held an emergency meeting in Hazleton, fearing the worst. That we can't afford to buy, that they can't afford to pay for. That's what's happening every day right now. This isn't what if, it's now. There were promising economic signs. Unemployment rates kept falling. The amount of jobs available was high. And as the year comes to an end, there are signs the rise in prices of some goods is starting to slow down. But few will forget the inflation of 2022. John Meyer, Newswatch 16. Inflation hit many farmers really hard this past year, and so did the weather. Much of our area sweltered under a drought for several months. A look back at the highs and lows, courtesy of Mother Nature. When 2022, a look back continues. From snow squalls to drought, northeastern and central Pennsylvania endured all kinds of weather in 2022. Storm Tracker 16 meteorologist Allie Gallo has our look back. 2022 was a year of wild weather from start to finish here in northeastern and central PA. From memorable storms to drought conditions, almost every month had something to talk about. The first notable weather event of the year came on Friday, February 4th. After a night of heavy rain and then dropping temperatures, we woke up on the 4th to lots of ice. Department of Public Works crews told Newswatch 16 it was one of the more unique storms they've ever seen. Ironically, the ice even postponed the start of the Scranton Ice Festival. On February 19th, the Saturday of President's Day weekend, snow squalls created rapidly changing conditions across northeastern and central PA. The squalls moved in from the west in the late morning, and by the afternoon, there was a 50-car pileup on Interstate 81 in Schuylkill County. Five people were taken to the hospital, but thankfully no one's injuries were serious. It was a similar scene just one month later on a nearby stretch of Interstate 81, but the outcome was much more tragic. A late morning snow squall moved through on March 28th, causing a massive pileup on 81 North in Schuylkill County near Pottsville. Six people died and dozens of others were injured. State police reported a total of 80 vehicles involved in the crash and portions of Interstate 81 North were closed for more than a day while crews cleared the wreckage in Schuylkill County. Another notable weather event was the March snowstorm. The week leading up to the storm, the fate of Scranton's parade day was unknown. Ultimately, the parade committee postponed the parade to the following weekend. Probably a good call. After all, it was 73 degrees and sunny the following Saturday. We ended up getting seven inches of snow in the WNEP backyard on Saturday, March 12th. That was the most one day snow total we had not only for the winter season, but in more than a year. In June, we looked back on Hurricane Agnes 50 years later, 50 years since the Wyoming Valley was forever changed. 
The summer of 2022 will go down in the top five hottest on record for the Wilkes-Barre Scranton International Airport, with temperatures recorded from June 1st to August 31st. Of course, other than the heat, the other big story for the summer of 2022 was the lack of rain. The Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection officially put Northeastern and Central PA on a drought watch on August 31st. Newswatch 16 met many farmers over the summer months to see what the dry weather meant for crops, and all agreed that too little rain is still better than too much. And after what felt like really no rain all summer long, the unofficial end to the season went out with a bang. A record-breaking 2.28 inches of rain fell on Labor Day at the Wilkes-Barre Scranton International Airport. It was the return of Lake Commerce in Dixon City that day, and many shoppers were trapped in their cars for hours because of the flooding. On Tuesday, November 15th, we had our first wintry weather of the season. WNEP recorded the first inch of snow in the backyard around 6 o'clock that evening, ending the annual snow thrower contest. As 2022 comes to an end, only Mother Nature knows what our weather will be as we look on to 2023. Allie Gallo, News Watch 16. Whatever the weather, teams from our area excelled. Everything came up roses for Penn State. See who else enjoyed the sweet smell of victory when our look back at 2022 returns. They always say Kim never sticks to her New Year's resolutions. But this year, she's resolved to save money and worry less. And with the new Volkswagen SUV, she can save on maintenance over the next five years. So who knows where Kim's resolutions might take her year after year. At the Volkswagen Sign Then Drive event, you too can make maintenance cost worry so last year. Hurry in during the Sign Then Drive event and give yourself the gift of a new Volkswagen. Kent State returns to the Rose Bowl. The Nittany Lions take on Utah. And News Watch 16 Sports' Ron Snyder brings you the pregame excitement from Pasadena with the latest on the Lions, interviews with players and coaches, fun with local fans who made the trip, and a look at the Lions-Utes matchup. The Road to the Rose Bowl. Watch News Watch 16 starting Thursday. Sponsored by Harry's We Buy It in Plains and Blaze Alexander Family Dealerships. Athletes from our area share the thrill of victory with us throughout 2022. Newswatch 16's Landon Stoller has the highlight reel from the past year. The Penn State football team kicked off 2022 on New Year's Day. It wasn't the start to the year that Nittany Nation wanted, a loss to Arkansas in the Outback Bowl. History was made in the squared circle in February. Lake Lehman's Lexi Schechterly became the first girl ever to win a District 2 wrestling title. In March, a record seven area wrestlers won state championships. District 4 dominated in Class 2A. Athens Gavin Bradley, Muncie's Scott Johnson, Montgomery's Connor Hare, and Montoursville's Isaac Corey all won gold. Uh, it's the best feeling in the world. I mean, I've been dreaming about this since I was six years old to start wrestling. And speaking of wrestling, Penn State was able to climb the mountain again in 2022, claiming their ninth national championship in 11 years. On the basketball court, Davion Hill led St. John Newman to their first state title game appearance since 1972, while Scranton claimed our top spot in the Super 16 countdown. In girls hoops, Southern Columbia also made it all the way to Hershey, and just two years after joining the PIAA, Northumberland Christian won it all, capturing the Class A state title. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dunmore star Sierra Toomey tore her ACL in the district championship game. The Lady Bucks would hold off Scranton Prep for a district title, but they fell to Jim Thorpe in the state playoffs. The biggest girls basketball recruit the area had seen in years, Toomey would later commit to North Carolina, and the Lady Bucks claimed the Super 16 trophy. In April, we passed the torch to our new sports director, Ron Snyder, who took the reins as the Scranton Wilkesbury Rail Riders began their new season. In May, the Wilkesbury Scranton Penguins made their Calder Cup playoff push. Once they made the postseason, the Pens beat the rival Bears in dramatic fashion, as Alexander Nylander's overtime game winner was the golden goal in the opening round series. 
The Pens ultimately lost to the Thunderbirds. Meanwhile, the East Stroudsburg University women's lacrosse team made it all the way to the NCAA Division II National Championship game, falling in a heartbreaker to the University of Indianapolis in the title. At the same time, area athletes shipped off to Shippensburg. Southern Columbia's Jake Rose won two gold medals, as did Susquehanna's Tatum Norris. She led the Sabres to the team title, the school's first state championship in any sport. Speaking of PIAA state championships, two area softball teams won it all in June. Pittston area claimed the Class 5A title, while Faith Persing led Montgomery to the single A crown. In July, Scranton Prep's London Montgomery made a major announcement. I will be going to Penn State University. The star running back committed to play for the Nittany Lions, but like Toomey in the spring, an ACL injury was the story in the fall for Montgomery. His senior season ended before it ever began. On the diamond, in just their second year in the league, the Williamsport Crosscutters made it all the way to the inaugural MLB Draft League Championship game, falling to West Virginia. All the while, the Rail Riders were riding a roller coaster of a season, ultimately coming up just short to the Durham Bulls in the race for the division title. In the fall, area athletes continued to dominate PIAA competition. Warrior Run's Hannah Rabb won a state golf championship, while the Lake Lehman boys captured a team title. Danville's Rory Lieberman won the PIAA Class 2A Boys Cross Country Championship, while Wyoming Seminary's Alana Rosenthal won the same classification on the girls' tennis court. The Central Columbia girls soccer team wrapped up an undefeated season by winning the school's first ever state championship. Their neighbors to the south, Southern Columbia, also won the state title. The Tigers completed the three-peats and won their fourth title in five years. Speaking of dynasties at Southern Columbia, despite a three-loss regular season, the Tigers did it again. They won their 30th district title in 32 years, then won the PIAA Class 2A state championship. Their sixth straight, seven Seventh in eight years and 13th overall. Just so emotional because everyone doubted us. No one thought, who would think a, a team that lost three regular season games would come out with a state championship? And I just, we proved everyone wrong. And just seven months after the women's lacrosse team went all the way to the national title game, the East Stroudsburg University field hockey team did the same. Nicole Crozier's goal in the final minute gave the Warriors a 1 0 win over PSAC rival Shippensburg. East Stroudsburg won the NCAA Division II National. National Championship, their first since 2015. And it all comes full circle with a Penn State Bowl game. The Nittany Lions are all set to play Utah in the Rose Bowl, their fifth appearance in the granddaddy of them all, and their first since the 2016 season. Landon Stoller, Newswatch 16 Sports. For many years now, you've been sharing the beauty of our area with us by sending your pictures to the PhotoLink Library. And you certainly did not disappoint in 2022. Mike Stevens takes a look back at some of the best in just a moment. Finally, we can't end this year without taking a look back at some of the pictures that you sent us this past year. Put them together with some nice music and a few words from Mike Stevens, and you have a year-end edition of the PhotoLink Library. We're closing the door on the rapidly fading year of 2022. It's been a fairly good year as these things go. We've had our ups. We most certainly have had our downs. There were a few times in winter when I think most of us had second thoughts about going into work, but we did it. On the other side of winter was spring. Like the other seasons, spring is a gradual overtaking of our bit of the world. Our PhotoLink Library contributors took advantage of it, cataloging the changing world nature was presenting. We looked at life emerging from the slumber that took us through winter. There was new life, new living, breathing life, new life blooming right before us. Then along came summer. It is another page in the year of 2022. It was a pretty good one that saw the curtain of spring going up to reveal a play for all of us to have a role in. The kids are out of school and families go rolling to places that offer such wonderful sights. At every turn of the road, it seems there is something new to be admired to say, oh, look at that, let's get a picture. We do this because we don't want to forget what we've seen. Rather, we want what we see to stick in our minds because, as we all know, 
What follows summer is autumn, and we know where that's going. But there is little choice beyond following along, and it's not so bad. Nature paints with a heavy yet delicate brush. It mixes colors, mixes shades, adds a bit of light where needed, as a well-versed painter generally does. Deeper we go into fall, but we enjoy it and take care to capture it. All too soon, at least for most of us, we are back into winter. The water we fished or swam in is beginning to freeze. It's colder now. Time to take everything outside, inside. The lucky among us have gone another year. Now we start anew. And here's hoping that in 2023, we'll see what you are willing to share in the PhotoLink Library. I'm Mike Stevens. Thanks to Mike Stevens for sharing his words with us this past year. And thanks to you for joining us for this look back at 2022. We look forward to telling your stories in 2023. Now for everyone at Newswatch 16, have a good night and a happy new year.